I've got a self-sabotaging personality. Keep that in mind. Ever since I was a very small space child, I've loved packing. I put my most precious items in a bag. Many kids do. But I never stopped. Once I graduated, I wanted to fly a balloon around the world. But I had no means. Then I found out that I could buy a boat for what I thought was cheap. I paid way too much for this old 20-footer. A boat is the perfect bag. It's big enough to take all your favorite stuff. I sailed that boat everywhere. I once saw a swimming moose. That was cool. I sailed to the capital. I found a sailing friend. Stefan. We tried to sail to Gotland. We failed. Hard. Got demasted out in the middle of nowhere. No reception. No battery left on the phone. Jerry rigging some cheap car charger to a barely alive car battery. Drifting hours upon hours. The mast punching the hull. If it keeps going, we're going to have a hole. Cutting the mast off into the abyss. The cold, deep dark. Throwing up everything inside of you. Throwing up more. A boat loses all stability without sails. We put up some sheets. Drifted some more. Got the old small outboard running. Aiming for the national park. Gotska Sandan. Imagining being stranded on a sandy island in the middle of the Baltic Sea. We got reception. At first with God. Then with the cell tower. Get found by a military ship called Sundsvall and winched up by a search and rescue helicopter. Have I got more respect for the sea today? Probably. I mean, I was 20, I could not die. I've now earned an age aware of my mortality. Stefan later became a real ship captain, sailing a big ship to many distant countries. I got another boat, a bit more seaworthy. I sailed it to Gotland many, many times. I got my revenge. But I also had more important things to do at the time. Mining industries were starting to expand operation all over Sweden. The first protest I went to was on that island, Gotland, which happened to be the one I sailed to. There I found a space child I could have grown old with. A The mine was stopped, first by us, then by the Supreme Court of Sweden, and the forest and lake later became a national park. Me and A went to many forests, protecting them, while the stars protected us. We were part of rebellions against the colonial structures still present today. We shared everything for some years and I got to experience reciprocated true love at least once in my life. I don't think many people get to do that. Then life happened and we got torn apart, something not even stars can protect against. 
Sometimes you imagine a catastrophe so clearly. You make it real. You know it will happen. You suddenly live in it. The netherworld. I got lost for many years in an alternative dimension. I neglected my boat. I didn't afford the maintenance. I lacked the skill to fix things. YouTube wasn't there to teach me absolutely everything I could imagine. Yet. Then I learned how to drive trains. I got to pack my bag every day. I lived in a van my first nine months as a train driver. A van is also a good bag. But it got broken into three times. Or I stopped it two times. The last time I was running out naked with a hammer, chasing the poor thief to his car, both of us screaming, me in outrage, he in terror. I couldn't leave anything valuable in the van, so I packed my heavy bag with the laptop and camera every day. My tools for making these videos. My most important tools. Ever since my first boat, I dreamt about it. Taking off. Sailing south. After five years on the railroad, I paid off my new 50-year-old ocean-going yacht. I installed an electric motor in it. I was getting ready for the dream I've had for 16 years. I've spent 35 cold and dark winters in Sweden. May my 36th be just a little closer to the equator. Just a little less dark, a little less cold. It's a dream so big for me, I can't believe that it could become a reality for me. I catastrophize again. I pack all my belongings, I get ready, all I think about is getting demastered again, getting caught in a storm, my cat Atris lost at sea, dragging anchor into cliffs, having to do some repair too expensive to manage, having to leave the boat in despair in an expensive marina, hitching a ride back to Sweden, coming back to my old job, asking them to hire me back even before the adventure have started. Failing this dream more than I have ever failed it. I've never had the opportunity to realize it. And to be completely honest, I don't know if I've got enough money to even survive down to France. I will have to find that out along the way. I know that I probably have maybe one-fifth of what most people would bring on such a journey, but I don't really like food. I can eat just rice, if I sometimes get some butter and a mackerel on it. One time I hitchhiked down to France and lived off food thrown into dumpsters for two months with my friend M and A, spending just 100 bucks in two months. Everything is possible. The catastrophe is so real in my mind, it's bound to come true. Therefore I procrastinate. I start looking to buy another camera instead of going, spending my hard-earned money on stuff I don't need. I have a camera already. I'll make up anything to make me not go. Writing this, I've packed all my things into the boat. Half of the things are for fixing the other things if they break. A lot of tools. My sewing machine. My new 3D printer. Things that fix things. All I need to do now is to slowly sail. And to keep afloat. I've got a self-sabotaging personality. I don't really believe that good things can happen to me. I lost that faith along the way. I need to prove myself wrong. <laughs>